Hey everybody. Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to streamline your creative workflow with this really awesome Photoshop plugin by Tony K here. So shout out to Dave Kelly, first of all, for turning me on to this little panel for generative fill. It is awesome and it's free bonus. So what you're going to do is you're going to add to cart and then you're going to go ahead and download it. If you have any trouble downloading, that's between you and your computer. I am unable to help you. So reach out to Tony or Adobe for those answers. Okay, so when you get back into Photoshop, you will probably see this little blue guy down here that tells you what new plugin you have. So when you click on open the plugins panel, it should open up your panel on the side and there it is. There is your TK generative fill panel. Now, first things first, we have to make sure that our quick mask is set up properly or this won't really work. So you access your quick mask right there. You can just type the letter Q and make sure that masked areas is checked and then click OK. All right, so let's create something from scratch. So these ratios that you see here up at the top are going to give you a 16.9 or 16 to 9 ratio, 3 to 4, 4 to 3, and a 1 to 1. So once you click on one of those, it just creates a blank document. So let's check the image and make sure. Sure enough, it is a 16 by 9 ratio. And, you know, from here, you can just let your imagination run wild and just create something for kicks and giggles. So I'm writing in whales breaching at sunset, and I'm going to click generate and see what it comes up with. Now that's real time uh, and that's interesting. So it's going to give you three different choices that you can see over here on the right or you can arrow through them with the number one which is right next to the word generate within the panel. But it gives you some ideas to work with. You know, why not? So go have fun. All right, let's get back to our image. And the technology that is being used here is from Adobe Firefly. So that is the AI that is being accessed here. So you can see all of these percentages listed in this window. So each of these percentages are going to determine how much of your original image versus how much of the AI is being allowed to think about what it wants to produce. So Look at it this way, the lower the percentage, so 5%, 10%, you're only allowing the AI to think about five or 10% of its own brain. And the rest of the image is going to be yours. So if you want it more faithful to the original photo, you're gonna use those lower percentages. If you want the AI to have more creative freedom, you're going to use the larger percent percentages. Make sense? Okay, so because it is an AI software that you're using, just like uh, Midjourney, if you've ever tried that, Adobe Firefly produces images, works in the 1024 pixel uh, arena here. So I have tested this and I'll show you some kind of before and after or some comparison results because it turns out that if you just use the original image, what be it a RAW or a TIFF or a JPEG, just a really large photo, then the AI, it actually struggles a little bit more and it is, it's going to look less like your original photo. So I will show you that at the end of this video. But of course, you know, Tony thought of that because Tony thinks of everything. So he added this little 1024 pixel, go ahead and resize your image uh, for you. So what that does is it resizes your image, it makes a copy of it. You still have the original photo right next to it. So not to worry at all. You have just temporarily created a little 1024 replica. So there's your original and there's the 1024. Now you can start here at any percentage that you like. I tend to go on the low side, you know, 30, 40, sometimes 20%. So I want to turn this into kind of a painterly rendition. So I'm gonna say oil painting, and then I'm gonna click on generate. Okay, so you can see here that it gave me some results. So it put it in a layer for me, gave me a layer mask, which is helpful. So you can just click through these different results. There are three of them. You can generate again if you want for three more, and it just gives you a lot of variety. So let's try a lower percentage. So I'm going to say 15% 
and I, I typed it back in again, but really you don't have to type it back in again. So now I have three more results in a separate layer above my first one. So the first one says oil painting, the next one says oil painting two. So you can turn these layers on and off, but you'll notice that there's not a lot of difference between the 35% that I started with and the 15%. So here's a really, really good tip. So add more information, actually describe the photo that you have. So here I'm putting in oil painting of a lighthouse at sunrise, which is exactly what this is. So when I generate that, I'm getting less influence from the AI and more influence from my actual photo, even though I'm still at the 15%. So now I've got nine different renditions, three on each of one of these layers. Now keep in mind that the more renditions that you keep, the bigger this file is going to be. So if you want to save multiple versions, pick your favorites and delete the rest because otherwise the file is just going to start to get really, really huge. And honestly, I typically just pick my favorite and maybe leave one more available in a separate layer and, and then I'm done. So I'm clicking on these different renditions right here, but I'm not seeing any changes and it's because I'm actually on the wrong layer. I have the wrong layer selected. So I have to go down to my layers panel and make sure that I not only turn on the layer that I want to see, but I have to click on that layer physically. So right now I'm actually seeing the top layer, not the bottom layer, which is the one that has these three renditions in there. So that's just a little tip. If you're clicking on stuff and it doesn't change, you don't see it. That's why. Okay. So let's click on 50% and click generate. Okay, so I still have the more descriptive version in there, picture of a lighthouse, oil painting of a lighthouse at sunset, but I'm getting, again, less and less interpretation from my original photo and more from the actual AI. So if I go up to 75%, we're gonna start to get some really weird results here where it's actually adding another lighthouse in here. And you can kind of tell that here it's paying very little attention to my original photo and it's going more off of just the prompt itself. Okay, so I mentioned earlier how it's best to work with an image that is sized to 1024. Now, why is that? It is because Photoshop is utilizing the AI engine that is in Adobe Firefly and Firefly currently works at 1024 max. So hopefully that will get bigger at some point, but you know, AI is still relatively uh, in its infancy here. So lots of changes to come in the future, but I want to demonstrate the different results that you can get between using the very same percentage on one that is at 1024 pixels versus one that is my regular photo. Okay, so at 15% with my regular photo, it is heavily influenced by the AI. But when I click on the one that is actually 1024, it's much more my original photo and less of the AI. It's more actually like a 15% influence of the AI. So Tony has actually very handily put this little 1024 box inside of the TK Gen Fill panel for us so that you can automatically save an image as a 1024 or generate another image at a 1024 while your original image stays safe. And from here, what I would generally do is take the 1024 result that I really like and upsize it through something like Topaz Photo AI. And that would give me the large version that is more of the actual painterly look with my original image being pretty well defined. So that's my advice. Take it or leave it. But uh, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for being notified of more videos in the future. I will see you soon. Everybody have a great weekend.